Hi chess friends, this is the Fidel Master of Sandro Santagati. Uh, in this video I will show you a game that I played against the Grandmaster Pavlovich from Serbia. I uh, played as white and I played e4. Black played c6, so the Karakan defends. And now d4. d5, knight c3, d takes e4, knight takes e4, and now bishop f5. At this time now it's the main variation, and I played knight g3, bishop g6. And now I thought about what to do because usually in this kind of position I play bishop c4 uh, with the idea to play knight d2 and then castle and maybe or f4 or knight f4 in the future. Uh, but I was not so sure about that in this game and um, I was afraid about the opponent preparation. For this reason, I played the knight f3. In this case, is the main variation. And now knight d7. Knight d7 is useful to avoid the knight d5. So that's a good uh, move for black. And now h4. Why the idea is take space on the king side because the light bishop is with a few squares. And now black play h6. And now h5. Bishop h7, bishop d3. The question is why trade the light bishop or the bishop f1 for the enemy bishop? Because we can say that this bishop at this time is very passive because can move the bishop only to h7, no other squares. So why trade an active piece for a passive piece? In this case, um, um, this move is correct because um, it's very important this kind of position, this um, diagonal. And uh, for this reason, the trade is okay. And also because if I don't play the bishop on d3, the other option is a2 or c4, not so active at hand. So I think d3 is fine. So queen takes d3 and now e6. In this position, my idea was castle on the queen side. So I was thinking about bishop d2 or bishop f4. I thought that bishop d2 was was okay because I can take also the square before and then I can castle quickly. So knight f6, castle, and now bishop d6. In this position I was afraid about bishop takes g3 because after that my pawn structure is not so good. But I think that I can allow that because after king b1 and uh, for example bishop takes g3 I can simply take with my pawn and uh, if for example I don't know knight b6 to an example uh, it's not a big problem in this position because I can play knight e5 so I can block the diagonal uh, this dark diagonal and I can play to push it to attack so I think this position is fine for me because okay I have this weakness but I have a good plan to uh, remove this weakness without big problem. But in the game I didn't see it, and for this reason I played immediately knight e4. So played knight e4. And now I played uh, uh, a strange move, I think, because I didn't fold attention about bishop c7 in the game. Uh, in my mind, uh, uh, he could play knight takes e4, queen takes e4, knight f6, and then queen e2. So it was my main idea about this game. But he played bishop c7 and uh, I spent long time to understand the reason about this move. Because why bring the bishop on c7? I thought maybe e7, but why c7? Um, after a long time, I understood probably the idea is take this diagonal and especially the square f4 uh, because in case black will castle kingside uh, the bishop can be useful to take a 4 and maybe try to block my attack with the 95 and the 4 and something like that. Uh, for this reason, here, my idea was take immediately the square d5 to stop the knight f6. Now I played castle and I played king b1. Because with the pawn c4, d4, my king on c1 was not so safe. And uh, for this reason, I played this defensive move. Uh, now he played the queen e7. 
And now is the time to improve my position. I thought about bishop c3, I thought about other moves. But my main idea was play g5, so bring this pawn to g5. And I said, okay, maybe I can play g4, sacrifice it. So I thought about that, g4. But there is a problem because black can simply take, and if we play rook g1, there is a 5. And after a 5, the knight is under attack, the knight g4 as a defender. So it's not so good because now there is the pawn f2 to defend. I was not so happy about this position and I didn't play it for this reason. My second idea was rook dg1. But there is another problem. Knight g4 can block my push. And I had no idea about how to remove this knight. And for this reason, I didn't play it. I thought about bishop c3, maybe to attack in this diagonal, but I didn't like it because I thought that this bishop can help me in this diagonal. Maybe not now, but in the future for sure, is 2 g5, is 4 f4. Okay, so at the hand, I played the rook h4. The idea is that this move can allow me to push d4, but at the same time, this move can help me to have a better defense on the center. So, it's a very interesting move this. Now rook fd4, sorry, rook fd8, to attack the d4 pawn, and also to allow something like that, so this knight now can jump, and it can be dangerous. And for this reason now, I took the knight on f6. Now, if black will take with the knight, I can push g4, and I can go forward with my attack. If black play queen takes f6, and it was the Pavlovich move, my idea was simply play queen e2, because the problem is knight c5 or knight e5, black can do, but with queen e2 I can avoid the spreads, and now the next move, my next move could be g4 and then g5, so that's interesting. Okay, now my idea is clear to attack the king and black uh, has to find a plan to counterattack. And to do that, the Pavlovich played b5. This move is very interesting because I cannot take the pawn. Because if I take c takes, e c takes b5, uh, there is the intermediate move queen f5 check. The king is under attack, so I have to play king a1. And after that, queen takes b5 and black is fine. Because now black can attack. My queen is under attack. So now it's a very hard position for me. For this reason, I didn't take the pawn. And at the end, I played c5. I was happy to block to attack in the future c6. And because I saw that it's very hard for black to bring this knight to d5. Because for sure, a knight on d5 is very strong for black. But the problem is how bring the knight to the next sample if queen is seven. Not a big problem because I can go forward with g4 and now then g5. So not a big problem if black knight can go to to, f, to d5 in this case. Um, and the black played e5 to attack immediately my pawn structure on the center because if black removes d4, could it po could be possible uh, take c5 and it's interesting for him. I defend the pawn, he took, and now I took with the rook. Take with the rook is fine because I can attack with the bishop in this diagonal, the bishop wants it really strong, my two rooks can help to bring pressure to attack the knight on d7. So uh, this move I think is very nice, there is the discover attack against the queen, and for this reason black played queen f5, I think is the only move now. This is check, so I play king a1, and now rook e8. Rook e8 is interesting, and now the problem is where bring this queen, because if I play queen d2, then knight takes e5, now my position I think is very bad. If queen f1, the same thing, so I don't know what to do. <laughs> In this position, the very strong move for white is knight h4, 
White is attacking the queen. And I think the only move for black to have a good position is queen g5. I thought about that in the game, but my idea was play queen f3, threaten something like that. So I think knight f6 is forced. And um, yeah, so it was my, my idea. Probably now the position is equal, but yeah. Uh, he, he, he made a mistake now because he played rook takes c2. And after that, I think my game is uh, is better because I can make pressure good. I can make a good pressure against g7, and uh, I can attack the seven rank. So it's a very hard position for for black. He played knight f6 to defend his position, and I played the. My in my first idea was play knight takes. Knight takes g7. But I think um, this move doesn't work because black can simply play this move. A nice intermediate move, and now I lose. So uh, I didn't play knight g7, and I played a very simple move, rook d2, to defend upon f2. Easy. Now rook takes d2, rook takes d2, and now rook e8. Rook e8 is fine because. My threat is uh, knight e7, knight takes e6. With rook e8, black can avoid this move at the same time, it can threaten checkmate. So I have to pay attention. I played a3 to avoid that, and now rook e1 check, king a2, and knight e4. I can bring my rook in the seventh rank, and now he played knight takes e3. I take, and now bishop f4. After bishop f4, I can play knight e7, and now in theory is playable king f8, but after that, the main problem is that after knight takes e6, the rook is forced to stay here because I can simply threaten rook d8 check, and <laughs> if the rook is far, it's, it's checkmate. For this reason, I played king h7, and uh, after that, I take the pawn. Now my plan is very easy, move the knight and then push the pawn to take the queen or to force black to sacrifice his bishop on c7. Now rook e2 check, and I play the king b1. I didn't play king b3 because I was scared about bishop c1. Okay, I can play king b4, but I didn't calculate it very well. And I prefer to play king b1. So rook e1, king c2, rook e2, king d1, and now rook takes f2, and now I take a7. My idea was take f7 after rook takes g2. So he played the rook takes g2, and now rook takes f7. Uh, why I take this pawn? Because it, it's true that I can push the pawn, but for sure, when I will go to c7, the black can sacrifice. So for me, it's very important take. Uh, uh, more pawns that, that more pawns that I can. So take f7 before that is is better because when I will play the game with the piece up is important play against few pawns. So that's very important for me. For this reason, I took the pawn bishop h2 and now c6. It's very important to play c6 immediately because if I play knight b5, there is rook g5 and now then game is very hard because black will take c5. So, so for this reason, c6 immediately, rook g5, c7. Now black has to give the bishop, and I take. Rook can take h5, and I go to take b5 easily. Rook b7, rook h2 to cut my king, and now knight takes b5. h5. And now I play to block the pawn, so knight e4, because this, this knight king also to e6, and I can take g7. Uh, if I can take g7, it's fine, because uh, for sure I can also sacrifice, for example, the knight for the last pawn. So if I take one of the two pawns, the game is uh, is finished. Uh, for this reason, he played king g6, and now I played king e1. Uh, my idea is was sure to block this pawn without problem. So my king now is on the square, and uh, can simply block the pawns. And now rook a2. 
Okay, I have to defend the pawn, so rook b3. And now h4, and now I go c4. c4 is very nice because I go forward with, the, with my pawn, but at the same time, I can block h3. So now black has to spend time, but at the same time, my pawn can go forward, and the, my knight can take c2, so the enemy rook is blocked. Now king f6, to be free to push the pawn g5, but black has not the time to do that, and I played c5. Knight d5, and now knight f3 check, king d5, and now my pawn c is very important, so I can simply defend it, and now I'm free to push it. At the same time, I'm attacking the pawn h4, so if black play king c6, I can simply take it, and now with only a pawn, the game is finished. And for this reason, you play the h3, but now I can play c6, and my pawn will go to promote a queen. Uh, now it resigns because the game now is completely lost. After h2, I can simply give the knight, and after rook takes, I push the pawn, and now black has to sacrifice the rook for the pawn, and uh, I can easily win the end game with the rook up. So it was a very interesting game, a very interesting middle game position. Uh, for uh, this video is all. Uh, thank you for the attention and see you for the next. Bye. Remember to follow me on social networks and share the video with your friends. Thanks.